guys, it's your best boxing friends. I'm Kelsey. This is Rachel. Rachel, I'm pissed off. Is Arizona Lara ever going to get a close decision? If he wins a fight, seven rounds of five, are the judges ever going to give him the damn fight? No, I don't think so. I don't think uh, Laura carries the weight needed to kind of get that extra, like, thing, you know? Like, I'm sorry, if you fight Canelo, guess who's going to get yeah. the nod? If you fight, I don't know, like... Mayweather yeah. or anybody anybody that's a star, anybody that has a, a real fan base. It doesn't matter if you're American or Mexican or if you're from the Philippines. And you're you just, a star. And you might bring up, yeah, there's been cases every once in a while. So, like, you know, Pacquiao fights Bradley. That was, And, yeah. like, sometimes there's a, I feel like there's just a shift in that. kind. You know, like, when fans just start to hate a boxer for no reason? Yeah. Like, he's beloved, and then all of a sudden, and that's just, like, the natural wave of things. And right. I feel like um, in scoring, the same thing happens. It's like you catch judges on a certain oh. night, and they're just like, you know what? It was pretty even, and this. tonight I'm giving it to this guy. Anyway, no, Laura's not going to get it. Like, he's... He's come up from, like, had to make his way, and he doesn't, hasn't had the promotion or the charisma to or whatever. be is beloved. It, is it just that he had the misfortune, in this case, to have been born in Cuba and not Mexico? Because if he was born in Mexico, I think he would have a bigger fan base, because Mexican fight fans, well, yeah, there's I a mean, lot more people I mean, in that fan base. Have, yeah. It just frustrates me. It frustrates yeah. me greatly. It frustrates me because... I don't feel like I know how to score a fight anymore because I watch Arizona De Lara fight and I see the criteria to which boxing judges are supposed to score fights on. Now, just a quick word about Arizona De Lara versus Brian Castaño. Um, it was a close fight. Oh, it's Ronnie. It's Ronnie Shields. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey, Ronnie. I just got off the phone with Ronnie Shields. He is so sick over the ridiculous scoring that he literally has the flu. Okay. Okay, he does literally have the flu. I don't know if it's related. But he does. He was like, I don't understand. I was like, because I was like, Ronnie, I don't understand this. Like, I, this is the criteria, right? Mm -hmm. You got clean punches, mm -hmm. effective aggressiveness, mm -hmm. defense, mm -hmm. ring generalship. Okay? I watched the 12 rounds. Between Lara and Castaño, Castaño is aggressive in the fight. He comes forward. It was a good fight. It was a close fight. It's not a robbery. Anytime there's a close fight to draw, it's not a robbery. But still, Arizona De Lara won that fight. Yeah. I would say Castaño, like, what he did and what people notice is that he um, threw a lot of punches at the end of rounds. Yeah. And then late in the fight, you kind of see Laura fighting with his mouth open. Um, which is a sign of being a little bit tired. It's not of being and, 35. <laughs> and so, you know, Thanks. and we just talked, Laura doesn't get, like, the nod in, in close fights, apparently even against, like, you know, where he should some, be. Some like, rando. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's not a rando. But but in comparison, he is a rando, right? Like, this Arizona Lara has been in the ring with Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. He, I mean, he's one of the better fighters of the last few years. Yeah. He's on the short list of greatest Cuban professional boxers. Mm -hmm. It's been a debate on Twitter, you know, and I hope that he still gets the big fights. But I want to talk about this. We watch in the fight, Rachel, and we see these, the TV announcers are talking. Love Al Bernstein, but I feel like sometimes Al Bernstein hones in on one corner and he's like, this is a great round for Castaño. And I'm like, what is Al Bernstein watching? Now, to be fair to Al Bernstein, he's um, a very successful professional because he's been doing this for years. <laughs> and I'm a for lack of a better term, huge Arizona De Lara fan. Right? He lives right down the street from us. But listen, that doesn't change. I, to be fair to me. Well, the question is, is it true? So like, is whatever you're we about to say, true. Right, that's the point. And when I, when I, I would see Lara land in, we see CompuBox uh, punch stats all throughout the fight. It's like, Stone was landing so many more punches. And I'm like, yeah, but he's landing them on Laura's gloves because Laura's got his yeah. hands covered. And when Laura lands a punch, I'm seeing homeboy's neck snap back to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Those are clean punches. Those yeah. are the punches that are worse. And you can tell as the fight progressed. And even the body work Laura was doing in the fight, yeah. I feel like the judges did not score the fight accurately. Now, is it like Manny Pacquiao versus Timothy Bradley level bad? No, I don't think it is. But I still think it at least 
warrants a little bit of criticism in that the wrong guy, the, the right guy didn't win the fight, and the right guy was Arizlan Duvar. And even the Showtime Twitter poll, which like a few yeah, thousand people, was like 60-something to 30-something. Yeah. And that's a bunch of people on Twitter who, if you go on, if you're on Twitter, you know, a bunch of people... They're not huge Arslandi Lara fans. These are just people. I saw people that picked Castaño that were a like, close fight, but I have Lara, right? I mean, I, I just, I don't understand why we can't. I told Ronnie, I don't know how to score fights anymore, Ronnie. I don't understand this. Well, there's been, like, so historically, or since I've been a boxing fan, there's, there's, seems to me that there's been a need for either judges to be trained, for the training to be known. For us to uncover like how judges are trained and whatnot yeah. like there just seems to be a lot of room for growth in that area now aside from that i think people like kelsey and laura um yeah this has happened to to you a lot you know it's happened yeah. to arizlandi a lot you need to change your tactics so if this is how you win fights it's not how you win fights because you're not winning like you know what i mean this was yeah. a draw you've lost some close fights you in these big fights, you need to change what you're doing because what you're doing is not enough. And you can either sit back and complain about it yeah. or you can change. And, and I think I think he's the one that has to change because we can try to change boxing, but we all know boxing's hard to change. <laughs> and I don't, it's not like, I don't want to give the impression that like Ronnie Shields and Eric Lenoir go out and just complain about it all the time. They don't. If you ask them about it, they'll say, we think we won the fight. Yeah. But on the same hand, I do think that there could be more, I don't know, like trying to find ways to, and maybe they do that. Maybe they do that. I don't know. I don't know. Here's an example. Arizona Delara has been here in this area for, I don't know, for as long as I've been here, right? He's trained here with Ronnie Shields. Mm -hmm. Arizona Delara does not take participate in the programs offered by Danny Arnold at Plex. Plex is a world-class facility. Um, where athletes from all over the world, including like super, uh, super NFL athletes like Jadavion Clowney trains there, just all sorts of elite athletes come to train for their sport there. Some fighters do that, some fighters don't. Lara's been a guy who does not use Plex for whatever reason. But when I watch Lara in fights, part of what frustrates me once the decision is announced is I'm like, well, yeah, Lara, you won the fight seven to five or maybe eight to four, maybe eight to four, but you could have won it 10 to two. You got tired in the fight. You haven't really, I haven't seen him get better. Like, yeah, if, if you're wise. the guy that, that's supposed to win okay. the fight, you should have won rounds 11 and 12. Those are championship rounds. You should win those rounds. Or at least one of them. And if historically you are losing those rounds, something's wrong with your strength and conditioning. Yeah, and I don't want to throw his strength and conditioning coach on the bus. <laughs> yeah, I don't know but, who that is. What I'm no. saying is, I'm not saying that we're, this is my opinion. I'm saying that, hey, it's worth a shot. Why not, since this keeps happening, why don't we just try this for a year or try yeah. it for a training camp and see if we can get over that hump? Like, yeah. you know, especially if you're like, hey, I'm 35 now. I, know. I just lost my you title. You don't have much more time to do this. Yeah. And the last thing, we're definitely, I'm definitely the most pro-plex box writing, boxing writer there is for various reasons. But the most important reason is that I've truly seen people come to Plex who weren't at Plex before. Examples, Brian Vera or Arthur Spilka do the Plex stuff, immediately fight the best fights of their lives, and then the same fighters leave Plex, even if they stay with Ronnie with boxing, who does the boxing training, leave Plex, immediately fall back off. So I'm not saying like boxing, listen, boxing is 80% or more skill, and that's the most important thing. But in world championship- Laura, you got the skill. Yeah, Laura's got the skill. And it's, a, you know, in world championship level fights, the lead elite, every little bit. It's matters. every, every little tiny thing. Every second of every round. And if he could a just. A good example of this is uh, we're reading Andy Lee's book, right? Great book called. Is it called The Fighter? It's called The Fighter. It's called Fighter. Great book. He's a better writer than me. It kind of pisses me off. In the book, um, Andy Lee talks about like his. I'm to the part where he's his next run at, at champion, right? And when you, we all. If you're a boxing fan, you remember like us when Andy Lee dropped down a weight class. We were like, <laughs> but I am now reading how that was from his perspective. And it's the small details. Andy Lee wanted a world title. He got down to the small details. He was measuring out tablespoons yeah. of that's what it's the small things when you're up in this elite class and you want that belt. 
And if you're not just like this much better than everybody else, like a Mayweather or a Pacquiao, if you're elite with the rest of the elite fighters, it's about those small details. You're going to have to do the tiny things. It really is. And, and even if you're at a world champion level, if you want to get like just getting a little better as much as you can, that's what truly separates the greatest of fighters, really. And for all I know, Mayweather and Pacquiao were doing the were yeah. doing the tiny things while they were like in their prime. Right. You know? I mean, for all the stuff that Mayweather gets about him being this or that outside the ring, he we works know. incredibly yeah, that, hard. That he, does. he is not like he is serious about this. He might train at three o'clock in the morning, but he trains at three o'clock in the morning like seven days a week. Yeah. I mean, that's just yeah. his culture and his style. Yeah. Um, what's your culture and style? We hope is real talk with Kelsey and Rachel. We enjoy just talking to you, our best boxing friends, about boxing. We love boxing. Um, I'm a boxing writer, if you don't know. Rachel is a beautiful wife. What are you, Rachel? <laughs> I'm all kinds of things. Rachel's a co-host. She's marketing. She's I'm a co-host. A photographer. Content management. That's what I do. Rachel I shot content. some of the shot with her telephonic lens. It's a, some of the biggest fights in boxing. <laughs> in fact, one of their best photos was from uh, I don't know what I'm from when. Uh, Oh, when Adrian Broner came back from his shellacking by Marcus Maidana, and he's back there, he's like being carried back to the dressing room. Only Rachel got you that forbidden shot of him back there, because there was no, supposed to be no cameras out there. But Rachel, <laughs> among many other things, if you go to her website, RachelMcPherson.com, content management ninja, emphasis on ninja.